here at uh, the mid-century house I'm working on. Just looking at the black spot on the roof where the cupola was. Can you believe there was a cupola in this house? Eek. Anyway, it's gone. And uh, I actually have it. I'm going to do a little Saturday Habitat for Humanity Restore donation run. Go pick up a few things from a few different projects. But yeah, that black spot, that's something else. I think what I'm going to try doing is getting one of those uh, sponges for sponge painting and take a medium gray paint and just lightly dab right there and see if I can blend it with the rest of the roof. Um, the, my clients don't seem to mind it, but of course I do. So I'm gonna try to figure something out for that little spot. But uh, let's continue on and go get uh, another uh, couple donations here. OMG, look at that house. Oh, she looks so pretty. Oh yeah, look at that. All right. Well, believe it or not, there's a cupola here and it's actually from, uh, <laughs> from when I did the garage last spring. And uh, it lives in its little cupola graveyard in the backyard. So I'm gonna go grab that and do a dual cupola exchange or actually drop off at the restore if they'll take them I don't even know let's take a see if it's still here oh it is look at that little guy over there that used to be on that believe it or not again we're in the middle of a city people small city though it may be um, no cupolas no cupolas we don't need them not necessary those are for barns to air out the hay so the barn doesn't burn down. Not for garages. So, go grab this. There's also a storm door that used to be on the front that I'm gonna bring to the restore. All right, cupola number two. It's a little worse for the wear, but it still has the roof outline. Of course, no one's roof's gonna be the same, and uh, that's actually a fairly nice storm door. It's probably only 10 or so years old, so they'll be able to get some money at the restore for that. So, let's head across town. And do a donate. All right. We are here. Um, not going to film the donation process. So I'm just going to uh, see if they'll take these... Uh, cupolas that are in the back of my van and uh, I'll let you know how it goes. Okay, much to my surprise, they took both the cupolas and I, I told them only sell them to people in Standish. No one in Portland. Um, unless it goes on a chicken coop or something, that might be fun. Um, but to my surprise, they did not want the storm door, so I guess that puppy's going to the dump. I. I damaged the uh, the surrounds for it when I removed it. Uh, someone put it up there to never come off. And so they need to have, uh, for future reference, all of the uh, pieces that go around the door in order to accept it, which makes sense because otherwise it would probably just sit there unless someone broke the glass. I mean, the glass has to be worth something, right? Who knows? But anyway. No bueno on the door, so I'm just going to run up to uh, Riverside Recycling and see if I can squeeze it on my City of Portland e-card because uh, I think that resets June 1st, so I think I have a little room on there. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Riverside Recycling now. Uh, I never come here on a Saturday, and here I am on Saturday. And, uh, you know, it's a big DIY day. It's best to come, you know, Tuesday at one o'clock in the afternoon. That's, that's that's my usual dump time. And I usually come in my uh, dump van, not my good uh, going to town rig. So we're gonna uh, get wild and muddy. I'll just wash it off when I get home. And uh, I'll use the city of Portland 
recycling e-card here and hopefully there's enough room just to take a storm door. I would imagine there is. We'll find out in a couple minutes. Oh, here we go. Hi there, I have a single storm door that the restore wouldn't take. I'm hoping I have enough room on my... I don't know if the e-card will cover that, but I'll do it this time. Okay, that'd be great. Thank you so much. All right, apparently we're getting a e-card exception. I must have had a good smile today. I doubt it, but maybe. We'll see what she says when she comes back. Right, let's scoot up that. You're too good to me, thank you. I appreciate it. Where, where do you want it? Oh, in the mixed pot? Okay, excellent. Yeah, you too. Thank you. All right. So going over the scales. And usually I have to stop here and get weighed in. But this actually fit on our uh, City of Portland e-card. So, yay. Because otherwise it would have been 15 bucks to get rid of that puppy. Oh, look at all this mud. I never take this van in here. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, was not planning on coming to the dump today. You're going to go that way, okay. All right. Oh, look at this sludge. Oh, God, no. All right. All right, it's there. Getting out of here. Oh, it's all muddy. Oh, look, mulch memories. Oh, glad that's over. All right, now we're gonna go uh, to the homey depot and pick up some light bulbs and some landscaping stones. There are two random items for you. Homey Depot. Here it is. Oh, yeah. All right. Go get some landscaping stones and some light bulbs. Think about these big box stores. See all those plants over there? They order the same crap for all the stores nationwide. You think the algorithm would have figured out the climate zones? So there are annuals over there that really shouldn't go in the ground for at least another couple weeks. I mean, Christ, it snowed yesterday on the other side of the turnpike. Thankfully, it was mostly rain in Portland. Uh, but, you know, yes, you can plant in North Carolina um, but I wouldn't do any annual planting here for another couple weeks anyway. All right, Saturday at the Homey Depot. Again, uh, another, another weekend of void if you can, but I just need to grab a couple things. All the way on the other side of the store, of course. Busy day, busy day. All right. I think I'm going to try this bad boy right here. 477. Hmm. Maybe getting rid of incandescence was a conspiracy. But we'll try it. Oh, yeah. I want. That's a purchase. It's going to happen before much too longer. I'll probably, even though I have 9 million Makita 18 volt batteries, probably buy the, the package. It's a better deal. I have a battery powered blower. It's not a Makita. It's a Ryobi and the battery dies in like 15 minutes of use. So it'd be nice to have the blower. Um, with all my 18 volt batteries 
and the string trimmer. Right now I use an electric one and have a 50 foot, oh no, pardon me, 75 foot extension cord that I use with it to uh, do all the properties I'm responsible for. So I'm thinking I'm gonna make the switch to battery powered and I got a sample right here. It is super light. I mean, it is great. And of course, if you go on Amazon, the reviews are half of them hate it and uh, half of them love it. You know, the use. But we'll give it a try. All right, let's go get some stone. This is the stuff I use. It's only five bucks a bag. Say, uh, the Pavestone brand, I guess. Crushed bluestone. It's a nice gray color. Goes with everything. So that's what I'm gonna use. Changed my mind last minute. Antique stone. It's actually what's already there, so I can get best of it and just blend it in. So we'll do that. Light bulb. Oh, you know what? One thing I want to check. I need a flag I pole. The one that turns. Spinning pole. There she be. So, light bulbs for one client, stones for another. Poles for me. I just got a super sweet Maine Bicentennial flag. I saw one down the street from me. And, uh, uh, you know, I have to have the coolest flag in, in the neighborhood, so obviously I went and found it online today, so my spinning pole is not spinning very well, so I'm going to get another one. Success! All right. Now let's go put up a light. All right, here we are. Deering Center Mansard. And uh, we are going to put up a light. All right, you got to see this light that's up there now. We're going to uh, take care of it real quick. There's what's coming down. We're going to replace it with the light I picked up at the ReStore. I think one of the biggest assaults on humanity, besides uh, you know, life-threatening pandemics was the CFL curly light bulb. I mean, honestly. Uh, it's coming down. Uh, so, a little bit better than a curly bulb, huh? Got a nice light fixture up there now. And that's, uh, after mulching and pruning, step two to improving the curb appeal at this place, now on to the next project. The Saturday continues. Uh, one thing that is uh, an affront to a civilized society is rolling around town after April 15th and clicking clacking with your studded snow tires. So uh, we're past the 15th now, so let's go ahead and Get these clickety clackety tires off of here and uh, throw on the summer tires. It's a van. Just gonna loosely uh, throw these bad boys on. Stem. Just slam it in there. Just give it a bam boom, bam bam. Yeah. Bam. Oh yeah. Bam. That looks classic. Bam. So okay. Uh, 
that's it for my Saturday. That's what a Saturday looks like for a curb appeal guy who works by himself. I uh, did some recycling runs. I put up a light at another place. Uh, donated stuff at Restore. Got the clickety clackety snow tires off of the van I use. Two vans. This one is for messy activities. <laughs> And that one's for clean activities. Of course, today I had to go to the dump in that one, which I usually don't do, but I did today. So, yeah, that's a Saturday. Thank you for watching Old House Redux, and I will see you in the next one where we're actually doing curb appeal type activities. Although there were, there was some of that today, I mean, to be honest. But uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you later. Once it's on, you should go...